So the game I'm playing today is called Krypton Comet. Now, you guys are probably well aware by now of my commitment issues when it comes to covering certain games on my channel. Oftentimes, I will say that there is this really cool looking game that I wish to cover on my channel in the near future, and that never ends up happening. Now, there are some occasions too where I do end up playing a game that I had mentioned something about in a previous video, but I only end up playing it like five years later. I'm being a little hyperbolic, of course, but there are some examples of games that I had wanted to cover, like, way back in 2017, during the, uh, the dreaded Hypercam 2 days of my channel, which I never want to relive ever again. Like, for instance, I covered a game called Loss of Fluid in one of my previous double feature videos, which I had initially wanted to play back in 2017 in one of my randomizer videos. That video, for whatever reason, never came to fruition, but I did end up featuring Loss of Fluid in a much later video that I uploaded earlier this year. Also, Super Win the Game, which I wanted to play around the time that I did You Have to Win the Game, which was originally supposed to happen about two and a half years ago, but only ended up happening in May of this year. Now, on the flip side, there have also been a variety of games that I mentioned in previous videos that I probably would never play, whether it be due to performance issues or the games just simply simply do not appeal to me. Most of the time, though, it is due to performance issues, because generally these are games that I really do want to make videos on, but I can't because, well, my laptop simply isn't powerful enough to run them. Because you do have to remember that I am still running on relatively old hardware to play all of these games. Like, I'm still using the exact same laptop that I have been using to make videos for the past five and a half years now. I definitely want to try and upgrade my equipment at some point in the future, but right now I just don't have the necessary capital to do so. Not to mention the fact that the world is kind of like burning down to the ground right now, but anyway. Basically what I'm trying to say here is that Krypton Comet is another game that I said I probably wouldn't play, but I'm playing it anyway. Because for whatever reason, I seemingly cannot commit to not playing certain games either. I just don't even know what I'm doing at this point, but then again, have I ever? So yeah, Krypton Comet is a game that I discussed briefly in one of my previous videos. It was actually my Stepped Reckoner video, and yes, this is another Connor Sherlock game, by the way. Yeah, let's just get that out of the way quickly, okay? Let's just, let's just take the cat out of the bag immediately. This is another Connor Sherlock walking simulator. Probably the last one that I am gonna play for the remainder of the year, though, because there aren't really any other games from the Walking Sim A Month Club Volume 1 that I wish to cover. I mean, I did mention something about Prelude to Irrelevance in my Stepped Reckoner video as well, which I may still play at some point, but that probably won't arrive until, like, at least 2021. One. Because while there are a lot of games in The Walking Sim A Month Club Volume 1 that I do wish to cover, despite the fact that I literally said 30 seconds ago that there are no more games in the compilation that I want to cover, but I think what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna treat this compilation like I do Kenta Cho's games. You know how it's become kind of like a tradition on my channel to cover some of ABA games or Kenta Cho's games like once a year at least? Well, I had this idea to maybe cover at least least one of Connor Sherlock's games, like, once every three months, like, on a quarterly basis, basically. Like, for instance, New Year 7016 we played back in March, and then Stepped Reckoner in June and Argon Swamp in September. I mean, I was originally gonna save Krypton Comet for December, perhaps, but... I kind of feel like playing it right now instead. I was trying to think of some sort of game that I could record today because I am actually very tired right now. I've been really tired for the entire day today for some reason and I'm really not sure why, but I still really wanted to record something anyway, but I didn't feel like recording something very big and substantial. So instead, I've chosen to cover something a lot smaller and focused today, which is pretty much the best way that I can describe all of Connor Sherlock's games, and there is a strong possibility that the next few videos could follow that same theme. A lot of the games that I'm planning on covering within the next couple of months before I do go on my yearly Christmas break in the middle of December are actually somewhat small and more contained experiences. Some of them are new, but others are also definitely what you would consider to be retro games. 
But basically what I'm saying is that the last few videos that I upload in 2020 are probably going to be much tinier videos. I really just want to try and cover some smaller stuff for the remainder of the year, because at this point, I just really don't feel like playing any sort of game that could even be remotely construed as massive. You know, something that will probably take me at least three hours to record, and the video itself will probably end up being around that same length. The games that I'll be covering on the channel for the remainder of the year are probably going to be a lot tinier and less substantial, which also means the videos themselves will probably be a bit on the short side. At least a lot shorter than what I typically upload nowadays. So with that being said, I am gonna get started in covering Krypton Comet here, so I know I haven't explained what this game actually is, but I'm gonna do that while I'm playing it. So Krypton Comet, what exactly does this game entail? Well, I think I mentioned something about this briefly in my Stepped Reckoner video, but basically, in this game, you are exploring the surface of a massive comet here. The surface of this comet is covered in large amounts of solid krypton, which makes a lot of sense, considering that this comet is just kinda floating out here in space with little to no atmosphere, so it makes a lot of sense that the comet is basically covered in ice, and I really do like how this, like, yeah, this, the surface basically shimmers right here, like, with the, with the lighting from the sun and everything. So this comet in particular is orbiting around an exoplanet. I'm not sure if it's the same exoplanet that we were exploring in Argon Swamp. I'm getting all this information once again from the readme file that comes with this game. And apparently, and for the record, I am paraphrasing the readme file here, the gravity from the exoplanet will apparently perturb the orbit of this comet just enough that it'll basically redirect it into a nearby star, which which I think is actually that one over there, the one that I'm looking at, and within a few years' time, this comet will be completely obliterated. The comet will fly so close to the star that it'll basically boil to death, and possibly get ripped to shreds by tidal forces. I, I, is it tidal forces, or is it the gravitational pull of the star? But either way, this comet is on borrowed time. Now also, according to the game's readme file, the Walking Sim A Month Club, this like mysterious, I'm almost convinced government organization that's just storing simulations of all sorts of like random exoplanets and comets for what I presume are research purposes, but I'm starting to become convinced that they're doing it for more sinister reasons, but I, I can't confirm that for sure. But apparently, the Walking Sim A Month Club were conducting scans of this comet's surface, and what they found is that apparently, or what they found initially, was that initially there appeared to be trace amounts of some strange crystal formation inside of the massive craters on this comet. In response to this, there was a research base that was established on the comet, which, I mean, leaves a lot of questions to be asked about how exactly the Walking Sim A Month Club managed to accomplish that in the first place? I mean, it's not specified exactly if the research base was built on the comet, or if it was built on Earth, but that's not really all too important, because the research station was eventually abandoned. It was abandoned rather quickly after they discovered that their tests were actually false positives. There was never any evidence of tiny crystal formations on this Krypton comet to begin with. Now, you're probably wondering how exactly that information is relevant to this game. Well, it turns out that these crystal formations are important for creating these little pods right here, or these little, like, like jewels that, as I've mentioned in previous videos, or at least previous videos in which I covered the Connor Sherlock walking simulators, are used primarily to hop between different simulations. The Walking Sim A Month Club apparently believed that there was evidence to suggest that these crystal formations were occurring naturally on this comet, but it turns out that's not the case. Now the real question you're probably asking yourself is, can you find this research base on this comet in this game? Well, as a matter of fact, you can. As a matter of fact, I'm walking over to it right now, but how's about we talk about the landscape here first? I mean, this, this view right here is just absolutely gorgeous, I just want to point out. Yeah, you have all of these little moonlets because, like I've stated before, these little moonlets are part of a ring system around an exoplanet that the Krypton Comet is 
passing by, passing really close by too, so close as a matter of fact that we're basically moving through the rings. Yeah, you basically have all of these gigantic chunks of ice that are just floating through the sky here. There's a lot of them too. I really like how you can just see the silhouettes of all of these little moonlets in the sun's light over here, like when you're, when you're staring directly at the sun. Or whatever star that's supposed to be, because that might not even be the sun for all we know. Whatever star that we saw in Argon Swamp I don't think was actually the sun either, like not our sun at least. I mean that wouldn't make sense at all, because the planet that we were exploring in Argon Swamp was an exoplanet. Or in other words, it wasn't part of our own solar system. So it was most likely a different star. What I also like too, is that you can see the shadows of the moonlets moving across the surface of the comet. Like right over here as you can see, you see that little, that little shadow that's passing by? That's from one of the moonlets that's hovering over us. And there's many of these big shadows that are passing over the surface here. As a matter of fact, there's there's shadows all over the place that are passing like right right above us. Like look at this, man. Really nice attention to detail here. And I'm also very surprised at just how many like moonlets there are. Like you'll notice over here that yeah, they they go all the way into the distance like way over there in the back of the comet. There's a surprising amount of them that are being rendered on the screen all at once and they they continue well into the uh the the other side of the comet as well. I'm not entirely sure if this is the northern side necessarily, but if we're going by the common knowledge that the sun always rises in the east and sets in the west, and assuming that the sun is setting right now, then we could probably assume that this is the eastern side of the comet? I don't really know for sure. So I could go over the controls very quickly, so you do have a flashlight in this game, unlike some of the other Connor Sherlock games that I've covered so far. You can press the F key to toggle the flashlight on and off. The flashlight doesn't really serve any purpose other than it just makes it a lot easier to see. But if you don't want to use the flashlight at all, well, you don't have to. And honestly, I feel like the landscape looks even prettier when you don't have it enabled. So I would recommend just not using it at all. Holy crap, man, this looks so freaking cool though. Like, I, I mentioned this before, but as a massive astronomy nerd, these kinds of landscapes right here are just so freaking beautiful to me. You have all these moonlets just floating in front of this star right here. You see the little silhouettes just moving across the sky like this. You can also kind of see the Milky Way galaxy, or what I presume is the Milky Way, in the starry sky here. Because, you know, comets typically don't have atmospheres of any kind. So it makes perfect sense that literally everything in the universe would be visible here in the night sky. And I mean, it's pretty much always the night sky as well, or pretty much always nighttime, due to the fact that there is no atmosphere here. It's really freaking cool, man. I don't know if you can fly all the way up to these moonlets, though. It does kind of seem like some of the moonlets over there are rather close to the ground. We could try going over there later on, just to see if maybe we could try and, like, land on one of them. At the same time, though, I really do not want to waste your guys' time with this video, because I just want to showcase what you can actually see in this game, like some of the more interesting monuments that you can come across in Krypton Comet, and as a matter of fact, you're seeing some of them right now. So that over there is the research base, the abandoned one. I have no idea what that other structure is over there, I also noticed that one too. I'm assuming it is probably part of the research base as well. I don't know if that's meant to be like some sort of, uh, some sort of drill? I'm not really sure. I imagine that the Walking Sim a Month Club were probably doing some sort of mining excavation because they were trying to look for, for some crystals in order to create more walking simulator pods. I'm not really sure what they were doing here. The fact that they were able to build, like, a research base on a moving comet that's just, like, hurtling through space at presumably tens of thousands of kilometers an hour, that seems a little sus to me, to use uh, an Among Us term. It seems very sus. Again, I'm also very surprised at just how many of the walking simulators in the first Walking Sim a Month Club are space-themed. I'm honestly very surprised at how many of them involve, like, you, you know, walking 
through distant objects in space, or walking on distant objects in space, I should say. In this case, you're just walking across a comet that is doomed to be destroyed by that star you see over there, because it's basically hurtling towards it now, due to this exoplanet that, for whatever reason, part of my mind wants to say that it's the same exoplanet from Argon Swamp, but I don't know that for sure, because the readme file doesn't mention anything about that. It just says, an exoplanet. If you want to know some of the other controls, you can right-click to zoom in, which was a feature that was taken from other walking simulators that Connor Sherlock worked on. You can press the spacebar to jump, and you basically have, like, some sort of jetpack in this game that allows you to hover for quite some time. And due to the fact that this is a comet, there's barely any gravity on the surface here, so you can float pretty high up. And as a matter of fact, you can float around by simply, you know, trying to walk upwards like this. And yeah, you'll notice that we're just kind of lifting off the surface here, so there's barely any gravity on this comet, which makes perfect sense. Because typically with objects as small as comets, there's barely any gravity on the surface. Like, they don't have that strong of a gravitational pull. So for the most part, this is pretty scientifically accurate. A very scientifically accurate depiction of a comet here. You can also use the W, A, S, and D keys to move around, and the arrow keys do work as well. I do believe your jetpack will run out after a while, though, because I don't think it allows you to hover indefinitely. It will eventually run out, and you'll come crashing back down to the surface. There is no fall damage in this game, though, I do want to mention, so there's pretty much no way to die in this game. Yeah, I want to investigate those mountains over in the distance in a, a little while, because, man, that looks, that looks really strange just how close those moonlets are hovering, uh, towards the surface of the ground like that, or, like, how close they are towards the ground. I want to see if I can actually try and land on at least one of them. Like, maybe I could go all the way to that mountaintop over there and see if I can try landing on one of these rotating moonlets. But yeah, you can kind of tell that the game is not really running all that well for me, which is really strange, because Stepped Reckoner doesn't seem to have any performance issues for me at all, and neither did New Year's 7016, so it's really strange how this one is just kind of... I don't know, it's just kind of struggling to keep up, like my laptop is. Especially since it's nowhere near as crowded as some of the other Connor Sherlock games that I covered. Like, nowhere near as crowded as Argon Swamp. I mean, it's mostly just, uh, you know, mountains that kind of stretch almost endlessly into the distance. Well, we have arrived at the research base, though, so I can show you what exactly this looks like. There's this giant dome right here in the center. Not entirely sure what the point of this is. I don't know if this was maybe, uh... I don't know, used for mining of some sort? Maybe this is actually like a giant drill, who knows? Maybe the, the drill part is like, like buried deep into the surface of the comet. I'm assuming this was built as a method of extracting some of the, you know, supposed crystalline structures that the Walking Sim a Month Club thought they discovered on this comet, even though it turned out that they did not exist on this comet whatsoever, so they basically just wasted, like, what, potentially millions of dollars building this giant research base that ultimately served no purpose at all? But I mean, hey, it's all being done in the name of science, at least, and I don't really have any issue with that, personally. You know, they just wanted to try and research this comet a bit more to see what sort of secrets it was hiding before it, uh, it reached its inevitable demise. So there isn't really a whole lot to say about this research base, though. It's mostly just a bunch of towers that, for whatever reason, are kind of just floating in the air. Like, some of them are, are suspended in midair, at least. God, this one is, like, so freaking tall, though. I'm not really sure what else to say about this. This just seems to be, like, uh, yeah, basic, basically, like, this brutalist structure that's kind of just out here in the open and is no longer serving any real purpose because it's been long abandoned. So, I don't know. Not really a great deal of things to talk about in regards to uh, wh whatever the heck this structure could have possibly been, or what it is. Part of me does wish that there was maybe a little bit more interactivity with some of the weirder structures that you came across in Connor Sherlock's games, because the only real thing that you can do here is just simply stare at these structures and try to imagine what they could have potentially been used for. Like, was this research base even made by humans? Is the Walking Sim a Month Club even run by humans? I mean, we don't know that for sure. For all we know, the Walking Sim a Month Club could potentially be run by, like, reptilian humanoids. Like, we can't know that for certain. Maybe the people who founded the organization are aliens themselves. We don't know. One thing I do know is that this freaking shot right here looks absolutely beautiful. See, it's very accurate lighting, too, because the sun is over there. It's obviously shining on the front 
of this research base right here, so everything is just, uh, like the rest of the research base over here in the back is just appearing as a silhouette. This looks so freaking pretty, though. I swear, man, the kinds of things that you can create on the Unity game engine, it's just absolutely mesmerizing, dude. I mean, I know that the Unity game engine doesn't really have, uh... I, I mean, Unity doesn't really have that great of a reputation. Like, even though I do think Unity is a very great game engine, and I think it is perfect for people who are just starting to get into game development, but... I will admit that Unity has never really had the best reputation, and I feel like it is mostly due to, you know, very low-quality asset flips that commonly appear on Steam. Some of which I have covered on my channel in the past that I really do not want to talk about ever again. But once you're able to look through the tsunami of crap that constantly shows up on Steam, then you will find some incredible things that are made in the Unity game engine. I mean, like Connor Sherlock's walking simulators, for instance. I feel like that's the only real reason why the Unity game engine has never really had a, you know, a, a great reputation with the gaming community as a whole. It's because most people are not using it for its true purpose, that's the only real reason why, I feel. You know, so many people are making low-quality asset flips with this game engine, and then the people who are actually doing, like, amazing creative things with this engine end up getting screwed over as a result. It sucks, man. I personally think Jim Sterling was right when he said that Unity has an image problem, because I still feel like it kind of does even today, but when you look past all of the asset flips and low-quality ripoffs that have started popping up on Steam in recent times, most of which were made in Unity, then you will find some absolutely incredible things that people have made with this game engine. You can still find some genuinely great games that were created with this game engine if you just take the time to look. Speaking of strange, incredible things that you can find if you take the time to look, there is also this structure right here, which again, I don't know if this is meant to be like some sort of drill or whatever, but it kind of looks like some really bizarre, almost alien-like monolith right here. Kind of has like a like an X shape going on here. It seems to have like two different layers as well. Not entirely sure what this could have been used for, but it does appear to be part of that same research base over that way. Not sure why it seems to be completely disconnected from the main research base, though. Maybe this is also meant to be some sort of scanner, like scanning the surface of the comet? Who knows? So the only other real object of interest that I would like to direct your attention to is this little, uh, sort of tower over there, on top of that giant hill. That tower over there is the only other structure that I've come across in this game so far, and I haven't actually investigated it at all. I was playing this game for a little while off screen, and I was starting to, you know, make my way towards it, but the, the only problem with this game, and like the only thing that I don't really like about it, is the fact that your character moves so frigging slow in this game. The movement definitely feels a lot more sluggish than previous walking simulators in this compilation. It doesn't feel anywhere near as fluent as Argon Swamp, or New Year 7016 for that matter, and I mean, Stepped Reckoner kinda had this issue as well, where the movement felt like extremely slow, maybe a little bit slower than I would have preferred it to be. So here's what I'm gonna do instead. I'm just gonna cut to the point where I finally make it to that structure, and I'll meet you guys over there, alright? So, I'll see you in a bit. Alright, well I finally made it all the way to this random totem right here, just separated from pretty much everything else. Yeah, that's how far away the, the research base is now. That's, uh, you know, just to, to, to give you an idea as to how far I walked in order to get over here. But there doesn't seem to be a great deal of things to talk about regarding this, this random, this random structure. I mean, there is this little piece that's sticking out right here that I can land on, you know, use as a platform. It does seem like some of these moonlets are hovering dangerously close to this totem here, though. I don't know if this is meant to serve as just, like, some sort of simple lookout tower where you can just, hey, look, look at all the moonlets just, just floating past you. I'm not sure. I am honestly, like, deeply confused by, by this structure in particular because it seems like it l serves literally no purpose. But it does, at the very least, allow you to get a really nice view of the landscape here, though. Not just with all the moonlets, but, you know, th this vast barren, like, icy desert over here. And I mean, there could potentially be some more structures that are hiding all the way in the distance over there. I'm not sure if there is any specific cutoff point to, uh, to this environment in particular. This definitely seems to be one of the larger environments that is featured in the Walking Sim a Month Club Volume 1 bundle. 
I'm not entirely sure how long this stretch is on for. And given how sluggish your movement in this particular game is, yeah, that's gonna take me way too long to see what exactly is over there. That does not seem worth it to me in any way, shape, or form. So other than that, I don't believe there's anything else of any significant interest on this comet, and I honestly don't feel like marching off in the direction of the sun over there just to see what other sorts of secrets lie ahead of me, assuming there are even any more secrets, which there's a very good chance that the rest of this comet might just be completely barren. There is a very good chance that this is all there is to see, like maybe there maybe there aren't any more like structures beyond this point. Maybe it's not like Argon Swamp at all, where there's like entire biomes that are hidden beyond the mountain ranges in that game. But either way, I don't think I'm interested in checking out the rest of this landscape, so you know what I'm gonna do to end this video off? I wanna try landing on one of these moonlets here. Or asteroids, I mean you can call them whatever you want. Pretty much the same thing. Well, I mean, no, they're not really the same thing, because moonlets are basically gigantic chunks of ice that typically orbit around a planet, and they end up forming rings. Okay, here we go. Hang on a second. Hold on a minute. I think... Did I land on it? Okay, yeah, I, I basically did, but then I think I fell through it. Uh, hello? Okay, uh, I am glitching right through it, actually. Wait, are they not even solid? Hang on a minute. Wait, come back. Come back, I want to test something out here for a minute. Moonlit, please. Oh god, jetpack, please. Why do you run out so quickly? Also, I just realized something. I think most of the moonlets have completely left the environment. Like, they're, they're moving all the way over there now. I guess to simulate that the comet really is moving through outer space, and it's not just, like, stationary. That's kind of interesting. Also, I can't tell if the sun is setting as well. It does kind of appear like the sun is beginning to set very slowly. Like, is the sun moving too? I can't tell anymore. Something strange is going on. Like, yeah, there's... There's barely any more moonlets over here now. They're all down over that way. Who knows, that could even be a clue. Maybe I have to follow the moonlets and I'll find, I'll find another secret of some sort. Also, I don't know what this is right here, but sometimes the camera just tilts randomly when you're trying to move to the left or the right. I don't know what that's all about. It doesn't seem to happen all the time, which is the strange part. Also, I think you can press the shift key to sprint, but you don't sprint very fast in this game. In fact, sprinting doesn't really increase your speed by that much at all. Yeah, all of a sudden, there's no moonlets near that mountain range over there. Yeah, they're just they're just completely gone, like, save for that one right there. That one that's just kind of floating all by its lonesome. Yeah, they're they're all gone. They just disappeared. They're all floating down over that way now. Yeah, they're just disappearing right off into the distance. They're, ju they're just leaving. They just left entirely. I guess something else that I could note as well is that you may have noticed that there hasn't been any music playing for like a good half hour or however long I've been playing this game for. For whatever reason, the music in this game only loops once and then it never plays again after that. Unlike Argon Swamp, and I'm pretty sure New Year 7016 and Stepped Reckoner where the music does loop properly, but for whatever reason, it just doesn't do that in this game. It does kind of add to the eerie vibe of the game though, because it's like, you know, there's no music playing at all and you're just left with the sounds of your own footsteps and this like very low rumbling noise in the background that seems to intensify at completely random intervals. It definitely adds to the creepy atmosphere though, and I feel like I can become a lot more immersed in the environment when there is no music playing, so maybe the fact that the music only loops once is maybe a good thing. Yeah, all of these moonlets have completely left the game environment. There's like literally nothing else to see over here now. The moonlets have just completely left the building, and you know what? I think I'm gonna do the same. Yeah, this video's done. I don't have any real interest in seeing what else is over here. I don't think there is really anything else to see in this game anyway. Like, this section over here seems to mostly be like a, a variety of mountain ranges and whatnot. Although it is kind of strange how these little mountains right here are forming almost a perfect circle. Seems a little suspicious to me. Yeah, you know what, it's gonna take me way too long to get towards this mountain range so I can see what's on the other side of it. Maybe I'll just do that off screen. But for now, I'm ending the video here.
So I hope you guys enjoyed that little, uh, adventure that we went on today. I know that there wasn't as much to see in this particular game as there was in Argon Swamp, but I was mostly drawn to this game in particular just because I really liked the entire aesthetic. You know, you have all of these little giant chunks of ice that are just floating across the starry sky in front of this big-ass star over here, so they just appear as silhouettes. It just looks so freaking gorgeous, man. I guess if you wait long enough, though, the moonlets will actually just leave the environment altogether. It does seem like they are moving in a specific direction, and I guess Connor Sherlock added a limited amount of moonlets into the environment, too, because they're all gone now. They've all just disappeared. It doesn't seem like there's any more that spawn in at any point, so... If you just leave them alone for long enough, they will eventually just leave. I'm not sure if that's perhaps an indication that you need to follow them in order to discover some other sort of secret that's lying somewhere in the game environment, but unfortunately, the environment in this game is just way too large, and you also move way too slowly that it would just take way too frigging long to explore the rest of this giant comet here. And I feel like this video has already overstated its welcome anyway, so I think it's best if we just stop here. Stop the journey here for now, and as I always do at the end of these videos, uh, direct you to some links to where you can purchase this game. As I've mentioned before, the only way that you can purchase Krypton Comet, well, I mean, it's not the only way you can purchase it, but I mean, you can pick this game up as part of the Walking Sim a Month Club Volume 1 bundle on itch.io, but keep in mind that, like with all the other games in this bundle, it was not released separately on itch.io. The bundle costs $5, and it does include Krypton Comet, but you cannot download Krypton Comet separately. But if you choose to pledge some money towards Connor Sherlock's Patreon, then I believe that will allow you to download all of these games separately. Because if I'm not mistaken, I believe all of the Connor Sherlock games that I've covered so far were actually released as standalone downloads before they were included in the Walking Sim a Month Club Volume 1 bundle. But I think if you want to download all of these games separately, then you will have to support Connor Sherlock's Patreon instead. Because you're not going to be able to find separate downloads for these games on itch, you're just going to be able to find multiple bundles. I also want to mention as well that Connor Sherlock is going to be bringing all of his walking simulators to Steam sometime next year. I don't know if I mentioned that yet, but there is a complete edition of the Walking Sim a Month Club that will be coming to Steam sometime soon, and I believe it features all of the games in the first bundle and all of the games in the second and third bundles as well. So, all of these games will be coming to Steam eventually. I don't think there is a specific release date for the bundle yet on on Steam, and I believe the complete edition is only coming out in 2021 sometime. But the store page for the complete edition is already live on Steam, so if you want to go and wishlist it, you absolutely can do that now. I will provide it in the description. And if you want to purchase the Walking Sim a Month Club Volume 1 bundle, the link to that is also in the description, where you can buy the game on itch. Thank you guys for watching, as always. I mean, there will never be a time when I don't thank you guys for watching my dumbass Let's Plays. And I will see you in the next video I make. Later!